Live from the headquarters of Ramsey Solutions, broadcasting from the Pods Moving and Storage Studios, it's the Ramsey Show, where we help people build wealth, do work that they love, and create actual amazing relationships. Jade Warshaw, Ramsey personality, is my co-host today. Open phones here at 888-825-5225. That's 888 888- 825-5225. Jade, I am so pumped. We were talking about it before we went on the air. The first smart conference ever at the Ramsey Event Center. The first event at the Ramsey Event Center. The brand new Ramsey Event Center is this Friday and Saturday, and it is completely sold out. Thank Ooh. you, America. We appreciate that. There's going to be about 3,000 of our closest friends hanging out with us for the weekend, a Friday evening, all-day Saturday event, and excited about that. And big news, we announced yesterday that we're going to stream Woo! the morning sessions on Saturday morning free. Wow. Hello, free. So that would be like George Camel who just launched his new YouTube site yesterday uh, on Ramsey Networks. And Rachel Cruz will be speaking, and I'll be yakking a little bit there in the morning. And uh, so we'll set all of that up, and you guys are going to get the first several sessions there in the morning completely free. Just go to RamseySolutions.com, click on events, and look for the free live stream on Saturday morning of the Smart Conference. I think it's the first time we've ever done this, and it's all from the Ramsey Event Center. I'm just pumped. This is an exciting 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 week for us i'm very very excited excitement is an understatement your first smart conference too yes to speak it that's right that's right so jade will be on the stage later in the day on saturday uh and uh, as well as dr john deloney ken coleman me uh it's the whole lineup all of the ramsey personalities will be there speaking and teaching you on the different areas of your life and uh it's a smart conference so when you leave you will be smart yes that's how that works and the live music dave can we just highlight there's music like it, this is like energetic like well, this is and you know we have people here that can actually sing we do you yes um john plays guitar it, yeah and george <laughs> george and george plays guitar that's right and sings legitimately and sings legitimately <laughs> and um and i play the radio <laughs> that's right so that's what i play <laughs> And uh, I can imagine I, you I playing have, a cowbell. Have, yeah. I, you, no, you can't. <laughs> <laughs> no, you can't. <laughs> oh, open phones here at 888-825-5225. Mary starts this hour in Oklahoma City. Hey, Mary, welcome to the Ramsey Show. Hi, Dave. Hi, Jane. Oh, my gosh. I'm so excited to be here. I really didn't think they were going to pick up when I called. Of course we did. <laughs> we knew Mary was calling. <laughs> they said Mary's on the phone. We got right on it. At- Yay, yay. Um, so my question is, I want to be a millionaire by the time I hit 50, and I'm 46 going on 47 in September, and my net worth right now is 351. I'm on baby six, baby step six, and I owe 293 in my mortgage, and my net worth, my um, income, my la- last year, uh, was 207,000. So my no, goal minute, you're, is you're 46? I'm 46. Okay, and you have 350,000 in your investments, and you're and you have 200,000 on your house owed. What's the house worth? Mm, 485k. Okay. Mm. All right. So your net worth is about 500,000, give or take. Hello. I, I yeah. Uh, I, I thought it was 351. But. No, the equity in your house is is towards your net worth. You owe four hundred. Oh, I mean, you okay. owe two hundred. It's worth four hundred, right? So there's about two hundred equity there, and three fifty is five hundred. So you got you're about a half a million. And how much are you going to add to this equation over the next four years? Well, um, I get paid in commission, um, so that's the reason why. And I want to be. I'm. I want to pay off my mortgage in two years, but with inflation and everything, I'm Okay, so you're going to add $100,000 a year for four years to this equation? First two years, pay off your mortgage, and after that, to your investments? Oh. Are you? If you add four, if you add $100,000 a year for four years, you're there. Because you're already at 550. Plus yeah, four, 550 right. plus four is 950, and you're going to have some growth. That's true. Okay. Okay. I didn't. That's that not possible. fancy math. That's you, just quick first grade addition. Do you understand what he did, Mary? He took your net worth now, 
which you you were not calculating the equity in your home. It was three fifty one, and then if you pay off your house, it's worth four eighty five. You add that up, and then you're going to have growth over time as well over the next four years. Wait a minute, wait a minute. No, no, no. Okay, you got three fifty, and then you have a paid off house by the time in two years, correct? That's worth five hundred. So that's, that's my goal. Okay, but like, if you okay, that's a hundred a year so... for two years, right? Yeah. Okay, mm-hmm. if you do, just a minute, stick with me. Okay. If you have a paid for five hundred thousand dollar house two years from now, you add three fifty to that. Is that not eight fifty? Hello, are you there? Yeah. I'm here. Okay, I'm here. That's how I'm you do me. it. And then the next two years, you add a hundred to your investments. If your investments don't grow at all, <laughs> if you add a hundred a year for the next four years to this total equation, the first two years Mm -hmm. to the house, the next two years to investments, you're over a million if the investments don't grow at all. So yeah, you're going to be there. Way to go, kiddo. You killed it. That's great. Proud of you. Touchdown. You did it. You won the Super Bowl. Now, is a million dollars enough? That wasn't her question. She just wants to be a millionaire. She just wants that first milestone Mm -hmm. to be there and and by age 50. So she's going to actually be a typical millionaire that we found in the largest study of millionaires ever done that yeah. Ramsey did. And uh, in, in that, basically, we're going to find that just a little less than half of her net worth is in her home mm-hmm. on the first million dollars. Mm-hmm. And the rest of it is in her 401k and in mutual fund investments. And so that's how most of the one $1.5 million net worth people we found. And oh, by the way, the average age was 52. That's great. That's so young. It's getting younger every day. Yeah, I love for that. me, it's just a puppy. <laughs> <laughs> it's more than young. I can't believe someone that young a could newborn. do anything. <laughs> They're just young. But yeah, it, yeah, that's uh, you did it. That's how that's you great. do it. So, you know, and here's the interesting thing. Okay, it's good to lay out your net worth and not to obsess over it, mm-hmm. uh, but to have goals. Absolutely. Because then that causes you to make positive moves towards hitting your goals. If you don't do, in other words, whatever you don't do on purpose languishes. That's right. Intentionality is everything in any area of your life. Mm -hmm. Yep. Where there is no vision, people perish and you don't do anything at all. So you have a vision, you got to go through, look at the numbers. I think a lot of people are afraid, Dave, to even look at their retirement numbers or see what it is that they can accomplish in the time that they have set before them. Yeah. yeah. I think you'd be surprised if you look. And it really doesn't, I mean, you don't have to spend like days and days and days on this, but when you go, okay, now what have I got to do? What must be true for me to put a hundred a year out of my two and a quarter income on these you know, for four years. I'm yeah. 46, so that at 50, ding, ding, I'm there. Yeah. Way to go, That's Mary. Exciting. Very proud of you. Good work. This is The Ramsey Show. We've been doing business at Ramsey for more than 30 years. By now, we're a well-oiled machine, but it wasn't always that way. Yes, we've always had a vision, always had determination, and a drive to help people, but what we didn't have was one central place to access all our numbers so that we could get further ahead or quickly see when we needed to pivot. We were always jumping back and forth between different systems and spreadsheets. So when NetSuite by Oracle helped us wrangle our revenue, inventory, expenses, and more into one place, it was a game changer. And NetSuite's number one cloud financial system can help your business gain the same visibility. Because businesses thrive on timely data. And NetSuite's real-time analytics can help your business have immediate access to your numbers daily so you always know where you stand and you can move quickly. So go to netsuite.com slash Ramsey today and set up a free product tour. That's netsuite.com slash Ramsey.
Jade Washaw, Ramsey personality, is my co-host today. Open phones at 888-825-5225. Andrea is with us in Houston. Hey, Andrea, how are you? Good, how are you? Better than we deserve. How can we help? Um, so I just started your university, and I've got all the materials. I'm kind of thinking a little bit ahead, and I was um, contemplating what to do with the two cars I have. Okay. Um, basically, they're both upside down big time, but I mean, in a perfect world, I'd love to sell them both and get a really cheap minivan that I can fit my five kids. What do you owe on the first one? It's 37. What's and what's it, it worth? Um, well, one place, one dealership called me and said that they could pay 40 grand for it, but then the car fax or max, whatever, mm-hmm. was saying like 30, like really low 30s. Okay. Well, what's the other one? Yeah. It's the truck. Um, it's uh, 47 on that one. And um, it's definitely, I could, I know, I can only get like 30, probably 30 mid 30 for it. Okay. The Traverse is upgraded. But the truck isn't. It's just the average um, uh, Dodge Ram. Okay. So have you? Let's do a little bit more research on this first car and find out if you can mm-hmm. really get forty for it. Because if you can, mm-hmm. are you looking at to just you're going down to a one car family, or you? Because you could take the three thousand if you if it really is worth forty, put it towards a forty seven and keep rolling. Or if you if you were wanting to sell both, at least that three thousand mm-hmm. could go towards the amount that you're upside down in car number two. You have you have well, any money do you have any money? It'd be like twenty grand upside down at least. Yeah, well that's that's Dave's next question is do you have any money set aside whatsoever? No. That's literally the plan. So um I have to still save the thousand emergency um, I've been, I'm credit cards are starting to get paid down and I plan to cut the first one this next week. And so I'm kind of still thinking ahead though, uh-huh. because I want to attack this pretty, um, intensive. So your plan and was to basically. sell both cars. What was your mm-hmm. plan after that? I guess I'm trying to get on your train of thought. Cause I can tell you what I would do, but you well, were going to sell, to sell yeah, I'll sell both and get a cash for a car, like a minivan that I can fit all five kids. Okay, and then uh, what does your husband drive? I'm divorced. You're divorced. Oh, so you and own two no cars with one driver. Actually, right. Oh, okay. And so what's your household income? Was like, okay, um, right now um, I'm the self-employed business owner, and so after business expense and my cut, basically after employees, it's um, 120 a year. Good. Okay. okay, good. So you're you're on that. I love your intensity. Mm-hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You're going to go places. You're going to be okay. Yep. So um well, do you ha- how how bad is your credit? Um it was close to a 740 and now it's down to a 650 because and, I've chosen to pay other stuff rather than credit cards. Um uh-huh. Do you have uh, who, who's the truck days. loan with? Who who do you owe the money on the truck to? Wells Fargo. So it's a good bank. And it's a good interest rate. It's not, there's, there's, no, it's not a good yeah. bank, no, but it is no. a bank. Yeah, It's not right. a bank that's going broke. But um, okay, so what I would do is trot over to, is Wells Fargo got a branch there that you work with? Mm, I kind of ordered the car online. So I'd ha- I mean, I could look for a branch yeah. near me. Uh, what I want to do is talk Wells Fargo, and I would prefer to do it in person. Talk, talk Wells okay. Fargo into letting you sign a note for whatever the truck doesn't bring so that okay. approximately $20,000 or so, hopefully you can get more than thirty for it. Hopefully your your data is wrong and you get into KBB and you do a private sale and you get 35 or 37 then you're only 10 in the hole. Yeah. But you would borrow that 10 from Wells Fargo and uh, then they would release the title to the buyer. Because you've got to sign a note for the difference. In other words, they're making you the equivalent of a personal loan, which they already have. They're just admitting it. Mm -hmm. Okay? Because the truck's not worth enough to cover in the event of a repo. So they're already not – they already don't have sufficient collateral, and they're just allowing you to get rid of the debt, which ensures that you're actually going to pay the 10 uh, or the 12 or the 15 or whatever the difference is. So that's what I want to start with is try to get them to cover, let you sign a note for the difference. How much other debt other than cars do you have? Um, credit cards, personal loans, and How much? Uh, student loan, which... Um, How much credit know? card? 
So the credit cards are probably totaling about ten grand less to pay. Good. Personal loan is about ten grand as well because I have two. They're small. Perfect. Um, and then the student loan used to be twenty thousand. Now it's nine thousand. Okay. So I paid that down. Okay. Uh, so what I want to do is temporarily stop paying on the student loan completely. Who's the personal loans with? Personal loan is some silly companies called Opportune and Reprise. They were basically when. Um, Because I have four months with my work, and so I didn't have emergency savings or any kind of um, bill savings until I got personal loans out. Okay, I'm just wondering if they would loan you the money to get out of that car if Wells Fargo won't. If I pay it off, they would. No, I'm not talking about if you pay it off. I'm talking about the $10,000 hole, the $15,000 hole you're in on the truck. Oh, I'm trying to get rid of that truck today away. and you've mm-hmm. got to give Wells Fargo $47,000 to get the title to that truck to sell it. In order mm-hmm. to do that, you've got to cover the difference, the amount you're in the hole. If Wells Fargo won't let you sign a note for the difference, you've got to find another bank or credit union to loan you that. That's why I was fishing around for. So okay. now, yeah, I'm selling, selling both of them. If I can find a way to cover the truck deficit by borrowing that amount. And then you're going to, uh, that's going to get rid of way more than half of your debt. Uh, and th- yeah, mm-hmm. scrape together the cash with the difference on the van and whatever other cash you, if you have to stop uh, debt snowballing for a minute and uh, get you a $5,000 van, Yeah. right? I hope you can mm-hmm. get five more for right. the van than it's worth. And then you can just go get a $5,000 van. And then we can get the truck sold. That's going to leave you 10 or 15 in the hole. Then you've got 10 on credit cards, 10 on personal loans and 20 on, uh, or nine, nine on student loans left. So, mm-hmm. you know, you're going to be out of debt really, really fast with your intensity and your intentionality. You are really doing good. Really good. That's exciting. I'm excited. It's not even my situation. Yeah. She's really taking action. That's what and I'm Let me tell you about. what. When you start saying, I'll do whatever it takes yep. and you mean it. Yep. For, towards any goal, you're going to get the goal. Yeah. Well, she's, you can tell she didn't say what it was, but she's got a reason. And it's, it's very clear what her reason is and why she's got to do this and why she's got to act so intensely. And that's really the difference between her and somebody who calls in, you know, lollygagging through this thing. Yeah, it's probably pretty easy to surmise a stinking truck was her ex's. Heck yeah. Oh, and yeah. So that thing is there's a lot of reasons to be pissed yep. at that truck. Yeah. But the uh, yeah, getting rid of that. And wow. And then cleaning up this mess with your $120,000 income. Yeah. In one year, you're going to be in such a different place because you're willing to amputate these vehicles mm-hmm. where you're willing to get rid of them. And so you got to set up the deficit. you got to cover that deficit, and then you're going to be fine. Very good. All right, Jeannie's in New Jersey. Hi, Jeannie. How are you? Better than I deserve. <laughs> um, <laughs> anyway, I, I just... Um, I had a question. I hope it doesn't sound stupid. I'm kind of doing this by myself, and um, I did go through SPU. I didn't have the best experience, but I, I, I'm i smart enough to to know how to eat the meat and throw away the bones, if you know what I'm saying. So I, I, I went through the course. I feel like I went through steps one through three re- relatively easy, and I'm wondering, is there ever a time when it's okay to be intense to, I need to buy a house very soon, and is it okay to be intense in step six? I'm kind of... Since I never really felt that. I'm kind of interested in what these bones you're talking about, but um, I'll save that till the end. Uh, you know, yeah. I think some people, they go through one through three quickly, or maybe they had something they were able to sell, or it's not as much of a process. So if you want to go quicker through baby steps four, five, and six, that's up to you. We tell folks they don't have to be intense, but if you want to be, you know, that's up to you. If you want to get there quicker, you know, do your thing. I'm not mad at that. This is The Ramsey Show. If you're like most people, your home is your most valuable asset. 
And when you want to make improvements, it can feel like everything costs too much or takes too long. But something as simple as custom window coverings from Blinds.com can completely change your space and add value to your home. We've recommended Blinds.com for over a decade, so you know you can trust them. From blinds, drapes, and shutters to motorized shades, they make it easy and affordable to upgrade your entire home, and their team is ready to help with everything from design consultation to measuring and installation. Plus, there are never any misleading quotes or hidden fees. Everything's backed by their 100% satisfaction guarantee, and shipping is always free. See why Blinds.com is the number one online retailer of custom window coverings. Go to Blinds.com now and save 40% off selected products. Visit Blinds.com today for more info. Jade Warshaw, Ramsey personality, is my co-host today. Open phones at 888-825-5225. Calum is with us in uh, Denver area. Hi, Calum. How are you? Hi, I'm good. How about you? Better than I deserve. What's up? Well, I'm looking at starting a drone spraying business, actually. It was kind of my grandpa's idea, and he owns a pretty large um, farm, and um, I guess I'm just trying to figure out how to start at debt free. I cool. have about thirty thousand dollars in um, a five twenty nine plan because I decided not to go to college, and um, I've also got about fifteen thousand saved up, and I need about forty five to buy the equipment. So drones. So I guess I'm just one. Wait a minute. How old are you? Nineteen. Cool. Okay, so drone, let me get this straight, because I'm pretty ignorant about what you're talking about, but I think I got the idea. You've got the uh, drones that are big enough to carry insecticide or some or, or fertilizer, liquid form, to fly over a farm and spray, like a modern yep, version of a correct. biplane. Yep, that's correct. Wow. How big is this freaking drone, dude? Oh, it's about... Loaded with chemical will be about 200 pounds. And how wow. many How many acres? How fast is it? How, how efficient is it? They're saying you can do 40 acres an hour. And then you got to reload, about, right? Yeah, but you can, it's just, so it's, it sprays about, it has a 10 gallon tank. It goes out and sprays. It comes back. You swap the battery, fill it up, go back out. It's just kind of a cycle. You just keep going, but you can do about a 300 acre, acre field and, they're saying about eight hours. So it's not really fast, fast, but around our area, there's only about two planes that can fly out, and they're super packed um, up in the summer. So Well, and you've got, you got mountain rangers to dodge in your area. Oh, my gosh, that's so cool. I love this idea. Okay, how many acres has your grandpa got? Oh, he has about 5,000 on the farm, but only about, oh, I'd say 1,000 or um, actual fields. So, okay, so what does he pay someone out. to do the, uh, do, do the spraying now? Uh, it's about 13 to 14 an acre. 13 to 14 and I would what? Match, dollars? Um, in, yes. Dollars an acre. Yep. So, so a thousand acre would be $13,000. Yeah. So you can make about 300 bucks per hour with the drone. No, no, no. I'm just getting, I'm just trying to get my total pricing right. So, so you could get somewhere around twelve to $15,000 for doing a thousand acres. Yeah. How many times a year does your grandfather have that sprayed? Well, it depends. That's the thing. It depends on um, what you're spraying. See, corn you would spray. You could spray at least two times a year. Um, it just depends on like alfalfa you can get. Um, where where you cut it for um, hay, you could spray it when it gets bugs in it and stuff. I mean, 
you could spray anything with it. So you could now, be give me an average. I'm right. trying to lay out a business model here. I'm not trying to learn the agricultural part of it. How many times does the typical farmer spray the typical thousand acre field? One, two, ten times a year. I would say one a year. One time a year is the typical. Okay, yeah. and you need forty five thousand dollars. So would yeah. your grandfather consider prepaying you for his first or second spraying? Yeah, I could see that as a, uh, yeah. If I got that, that right, that's if he did two, that's like 30 grand, and you already have 15. We just did this. <laughs> yeah, um, I mean, his his acres aren't as big for the um, – for his field. So I would, I would definitely have to go out and find other people. Well, get somebody else. That's and here's it. the thing. If you go to some, your grandpa's going to do it because he wants to help you. Okay. Cause he's, it's money he's going to pay anyway. The only thing he's losing is he's going to pay it early to get his grandson's deal up and running. Okay. So get him to pay you for two sprays up front, whatever it is. Okay. Now let's say that you've got a neighbor that has a $12,000 deal because it's a one uh, 1,000 acres to be sprayed. Okay. You with me? I'm using an example. You can change the yeah. numbers to be more reality. Then go to that neighbor. That's a friend of your grandpa's and say, Hey, I'm trying to get this up and running. I'm 19. I'm a young business guy. I'm not going to borrow money. And instead of doing that, I want to pre sell you and you prepay for your $12,000 spraying. The great news is I'm only going to charge you nine for this one. If you prepay me. Yeah, that, that's actually, I didn't even think about that, really. And they will, um, well, that's why I'm here. And they will, because <laughs> <I'm, laughs> I've never done drone spraying business, but I'm about to. This is, I love this. <laughs> you're so cool, Caleb. You are, a, you man, you're amazing. It's cool. So what a great young entrepreneur. Yeah, get the, in other words, what I have done in the past, I've got customers to prepay me. I give them a discount to do that. And that gives me all the money to do the deal. And I don't have to do deal with some stupid butt bank. And I don't have interest. And I don't have to take the money out of my 529 and get the government taking half of it in penalties mm -hmm. and interest, which I don't want to do that either. So I'm, you noticed I was avoiding the 529. Um, and here's the worst thing that could happen is you have to spray all these fields and this doesn't work out and you've got some paid for drones. True that. Figure out something else to do with them. Well, I mean, <laughs> you can take pictures with them. You can yeah. do a lot of stuff with them because these are monster drones. Yeah. If they're lugging 200 pounds. That's a they'll carry a person it's unbelievable you could fly me around <laughs> there we go look Give mom no cave hands. rides over the field no not really but yeah i mean oh my gosh that's pretty impressive that is that's very what a very great very young cool. entrepreneur great creative strategy too and let me tell you this folks i um between what we do on the ramsey show and what we do with the entree leadership i'm running into so many entrepreneurs that are under 30 that are not stupid Mm -hmm. They are not lacking in work ethic. They are hardworking, smart. They've got good ideas. They're thinking that young guy's being wise. He calls us. How can I do this debt yep. free? I'm so excited about the future of America. Me too. It's going to be good. I, you know, you've got to believe that there's options out there. You can't, you know, go through with tunnel vision, but these people are just going, what do I like doing? What do I know about doing? What am I good at doing? And usually that's going to lead you down some pretty, uh, Lucrative paths, if you allow it to. Caleb, I'm going to send you a copy of Entree Leadership, my number one best-selling book on how we started this business on a card table in my living room and how we run it up to this day. Maybe it'll help you keep going because you're an amazing young guy. John is with us in Minneapolis. Hey, John, welcome to the Ramsey Show. How's it going today? Better than I deserve. What's up? So I'm wondering if... I should rent for a season and sell my house because it's way over the 25% you recommend. What's your payment and how much do you take home each month? So I bring home about 4500 on a month that I don't have any overtime. Mm -hmm. And currently my mortgage payment is 1735 on a 15 year with about 12 and a half years to go. But I also have one of those HELOCs that Dave loves. Oh. That brings brings me up to an, another seven seven five, to a total of twenty five ten a month, which is about fifty five percent. What do you owe on the HELOC? Uh, Sixty two thousand. Whew. Okay. What for? All of the usual stuff I did. Uh, consolidation in the past. 
Because the other part uh, wasn't going to cost house. you your house. This yeah. stupid stuff cost you your right. house. And that's that's exactly where I'm at with it. Do you have any other debt? 3700 that I'm in Babe Step 2 will be done by about the 15th of May. You said 3700 mm-hmm. All right. Correct. Because I was going to get, it continued to be gazelle intense on the HELOC, but... How fast can you knock it out if you if you crank the overtime? I'm thinking one and a half to two years. Do you like your house? Second part time job. Um, I would prefer to say yes. Then then got to work for it. Bust it for eighteen months and clear the HELOC. Shoo! Yeah, yeah. That's just the (sighs) HELOC is just an extension of your debt snowball because all the stuff that would have been in your debt snowball got rolled up in that, and I don't want that to be the cause of you selling your house. I'd rather you bust that debt snowball in the mouth by being intense for another 18 months keep your house since you like it and it's a good house yeah that's what i would do good question sir this is the ramsey show Shaw, Ramsey personality, is my co-host today. If you're new to this Ramsey Show stuff, and many of you are, based on our huge increase in ratings and rankings, thank you for visiting us, and thank you for all of you telling people about the show, too. We really appreciate you. If you're new and you're trying to figure out what all these words and baby steps and debt snowballs and stuff means and the code around here, uh, we'll help you get started. It's completely free. Go to RamseySolutions.com. Click the Get Started button. And that'll get you started. We'll help you figure out where you are and what your next best steps are. Again, completely free. Click Get Started at RamseySolutions.com. Our question of the day is sponsored by Neighborly, your hub for home services. Summer's busy. Makes it hard to find someone for home maintenance sometimes. But Neighborly is your source for local repair professionals like AirServe, Mr. Electric, dryer vent wizard go to neighborly.com and be ready for any season april is national financial literacy month and all month long teachers and students in classrooms across america are taking time to talk about the importance of learning good money skills one search student sends in our question of the day that's right we got today's question that's coming from Brittany in arizona she says if i'm trying to get into my dream college and i get in but i don't get a scholarship should i still go or should i try to get a full scholarship from another college this is a very good question well you know at the end of the day the goal is to go to college debt free right we don't want to go into into debt for our education. And I don't know how much the school costs, but if you're not getting a scholarship there, you know, the next box to tick is to say, well, is there any way that I can work through this and pay the tuition as I go? Um, So that's the next option and get a job and do that whole thing. And if that's out of the picture, like, I don't know if we're talking about Ivy League, or I don't know if we're talking about, you know, a local state college, what the situation is. But if you're not able to pay cash for it, We need to start looking at other options is basically what this boils down to. Yeah, if you're going to go in debt to go, your dream college is actually a nightmare. Yeah, I know that. I know that firsthand. (laughs) So that's number one. (sighs) Number two, Brittany, I think this is a good chance for you to get a little bit um, philosophical Mm -hmm. and say, okay, why is my dream college my dream college? college why is it my dream yeah what makes it your favorite what makes it exciting and many times and i'm not necessarily sure this true about Brittany, but it could be many times when we say our dream something uh we're basing it on something that is not real well it's a red flag yeah it's a red flag when i hear that so if my dream college is a big name fancy school 
then I, that means I think if I go to that school, I'm going to be more likely to be successful because I have that name. Yeah. Well, let me help you with that dream, Brittany. That dream is called a lie because there's absolutely zero research, none. And there's tons of research out there. Not one piece of data says that where you went to school indicates your increased probability of success. That's right. Not one. Not one. Lots of failures at life. <laughs> went to <A> Harvard. <laughs> went to Yale. Went to MIT. Lots of them. That's true. And they completely flunked out at life. Their life <laughs> sucks. They suck. And where they went to school <laughs> didn't fix that. It's you, where you go to school, there's zero indication. No. Nope. None. Well, I'm going to hang out with people and bull crap. Well, I'm going to go to Harvard Law. Whoopee. Yeah. You know, the, I, listen. The network is the big, that's the one people are like, well, I, I got to build my network. And that's a complete lie. The number of people you run around with 25 years after you got out of school that went to school with you is precisely zero. Come on. And y'all were drinking together anyway. Y'all weren't. <laughs> y'all weren't. Y'all weren't thinking about how to be successful. Hello. Look, Dave, Playing beer pong does not constitute a friendship. When people say dream, when they say dream college, Dream house, dream vacation, dream car. You're getting dream ready to car. get. You're getting ready to get. Getting ready to get in a wreck. That is now, your excuse the for the second stupidity. reason you could have a dream school is for another wrong reason to pick a college, and that could be the social environment of that college. True that. Yeah. It's got a great football team. They got it's a, a party lazy river. School. They got a lazy river. <laughs> their their facilities are beautiful. Yeah. The campus is pretty. Yeah. The town is pretty. Good looking guys. Zero percent of this has to do with your future. Zero. No one ever became successful in life because the school they went to was a great party school and had a great football team. No. Zero percent. Zero percent. Oh, I went to that school, and because they played football well, I am successful. Yeah. What? No. What? No. No, no, what? no. <laughs> in life, you're actually going to have to do your job and be good at your job and show up on time for your job. Like You're going to have I'm to do I'm not accusing Brittany of this, but I am accusing <laughs> lots of people who are considering their dream school. But <laughs> most of the time, it comes down to they think they are getting superior academics and superior prestige that yeah. is going to give them a superior chance towards success. And there's zero data, data that says that. Yeah. Because here's Absolutely. what truly happens. If you are going to be successful after you graduate, you will spend the next 25 years of your life being a continual learning person, a person of continue to learn. So good. You will get the equivalent of three more degrees because you read, you attend conferences and classes, you continue your professional growth. That's right. If you graduate from college and never read another book, you become what's known as a stupid human. <laughs> you are not trending towards success. It's true. Really? It's true. I didn't go to the best music school, and I remember that my classmates were going to And I know people went to the schools. best music schools who cannot sing. They saw Hello! I'm just saying, you know, at the end of the day, you got to be the one that works hard. Like Dave said, you got to be the one that furthers your education. It is not. And nobody ever asked me for my degree, by the way. Yeah. I listen. I, I was at the doctor the other day and uh, they were getting ready to do some minor surgery. And I did not ask to see where he went to school. You didn't stop them before they put, you know, the no, needle and go, no, wait. No. I didn't even, know didn't, where even you went. Do, didn't even do that with the last three lawyers I hired. <laughs> all I wanted to know is, are you smart and are you mean and can you win? Okay. That's all I wanted to know about the lawyer. Okay. Mm, I don't right. care when they went to law school. Are you smart? Are you mean? And can you win? That's a fact. Because lawyers, if you're going to go to court, you need to be smart, mean yeah. and win. Right. Yeah. And so, oh my gosh, you know, th this is, this is what, this is how you decide this. So parents stop this lingo. Mm -hmm. Now, Brittany, again, I'm not it's making not fun hurt. of you personally because I don't know that any of that is true about you. You did not indicate that in your question. That's right. Okay. So I'm, I'm but I'm using that as a springboard for this uh, platform to say, folks, I, my forever home. <laughs> Let me tell you, <laughs> there's on. only one forever home. It's heaven. That's it. That's a word. Otherwise, dude. you don't have a forever home. 
your butt's going to move again. <laughs> At least to the nursing home. I mean, your that's butt the is going to move again. Every time I move into a forever, forever home, twelve to fifteen years later, I'm gone again. <laughs> that's right. It's the dream home. It's our dream. Your home. dreams change. We used to build dream homes. We had on the sign when I was 22 years old. I worked for a home builder. On the sign, it said, "Build your dream home here." You know what I discovered? By the time we finished the house, their dreams had changed. Yeah. Well, that sign. What they want that sign to say is, "Your permission to." Go crazy and spend what you want to spend here. That's what that is. Well, because I'm only going to do it once, so yeah. I might as well go all in. Yeah, that's all the YOLO. My dreams don't. Because the other, you know the other part of this? It just occurred to me. The vernacular of my dream something, you know what that says? Yeah. You can't tell me I can't <gasps> because you're a dream killer. That is good. This is I, you have to live in your truth. Yes, it when puts you up say a boundary. Dream, yes, other people can't question you if you say it's my dream home, it's my dream, it's my dream school because yeah. no one is allowed to be a dream killer. Oh yeah, we gotta except let... Simon Cowell. <laughs> that is true. He will kill He'll your dreams you. if you can't sing. I don't know. I'll kill somebody's dreams too. I'll that tell will you, be you can't life. It. Life will be Simon Cowell if you don't have it out there. Okay, Facts. someone will come along and tell you your dream's stupid. That's a stupid dream. Don't do it. It's going to be a nightmare. <laughs> so some, sometimes when they say dream school, that's what they mean. So I'm just helping yeah. you parents, some of you educators, go ahead and kill their dreams now yes. and get them to reality. Let's get an education in something that's actually usable where we can complete the hey, four-year up, degree. Guys? It's Jade. Look, if you like what you heard in this episode and want to know more about getting started on the Ramsey Baby Steps, go to RamseySolutions.com and click the Get Started button. We'll help you figure out the best next step for you based on your specific situation. That's RamseySolutions.com and click Get Started. From the headquarters of Ramsey Solutions, broadcasting from the pods of moving and storage and studios, it's the Ramsey Show, where we help people build wealth, do work that they love, and create actual amazing relationships. Thank you for joining us. Open phones at 888-825-5225. You jump in. We'll talk about your life and your money. Jade Warshaw, Ramsey Personality, is my co-host today. Paul is with us in las vegas hi paul how are you uh i'm doing good how about you better than i deserve what's up so my, uh, my question is um what are some of the most efficient side hustles you could think of because uh, i've tried uh like driving side hustles such as like instacart and doordash but it seems to cost more in gas than it seems to like earn money um so just to give you like backstory um so I make over 38000 a year, and I also get a disability pay from the VA, so that's uh, like $13,700 a year. Uh, however, so I'm in the middle of a divorce, and so I only get half of my paycheck uh, from my job. And um, per temporary court orders, since uh, September of 2021, I've also had to pay the mortgage on the house that my uh, ex and my kids have been living in. Um. So, and well, also, wait a minute, uh, wait a minute. she got half your check, and you pay the house. Yes. Uh, yeah, and so uh, on top of that, uh, I'm actually technically in Pahrump, but uh, we do. We, my parents and I. I've been living with my parents for the last uh, few years. We will be closing on a house in Vegas uh, in the tw on the 25th. But in the meantime, I've been who's driving. Who, we? Who's we? Uh, my parents, my parents will be closed on the house, but I've been living with them. Okay, but you're not on it. You're not on the loan. No, no. Okay. okay. I'm, I'm just saying, like you know, we collectively. But anyway, so gotcha. in, in the meantime, uh, I've been driving like an hour and twenty minutes to and from work, uh, and have have filled on gas three times a week, and uh, my house is currently getting fixed up to get sold. Um, and uh, it actually, it'll be done like really soon within like the next week or two. Uh, but I do have to pay a thousand dollars deductible to the contractor and a thousand dollars to the handyman. Mm -hmm. And uh, I have over $16,800 in debt. Um, the first one is a bank loan money. I okay. Uh, wait, 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 wait. Then... Uh, uh, 
the house that your wife is living in soon to be your ex is being sold? Yes, she she moved out of it voluntarily um, and moved. She and she and the kids moved into her grandma's trailer. I, I had nothing to do with that, but we, we we both agreed to sell the house through mediation. Okay, so the house you're paying payments on for her is not for her; it's for you. You're going to sell it. Yes. And how much money will it get? Will you get out of it when you sell it? Um, we're trying. We're going to try and sell for um, 180k. And what do you owe on it? Um, I I don't have the, I don't have the information on that. Sorry. Well, I mean, do you owe a hundred and eighty, or do you owe eighty? I mean, roughly. Um, I want to say like a um, hundred and twenty k. Okay, so you're going to get 60. twenty, thirty thousand bucks a piece. So you'll be able to pay off your debt, and she'll get. The, you're going to split the house equity, I assume. Yes. Okay. Good. Okay, so then really what you're going to come down to is you're going to be debt-free with the sale of your house, and with your divorce, everything will be settled, and you'll be able to just pay child support at that point, which you should do, and I assume you're more than willing to do that, and then all you've got is a career question. Am I right? Oh, well, so I'm going to be uh, going back to school. Uh, No, you're not. You're broke. No, I know. I'm going back to school on the GI Bill. Oh, okay. so I'll, I'll get housing allowance uh, from from that, and um, I'm actually going to uh, work towards a communications uh, degree to go into copywriting. Mm-hmm. Okay. So if you quit work and went and did that now, would that not solve your problem? Um, well, I have no idea how to get into the um, into the copywriting uh, industry. No, I mean do you, you're going to go to school. And they're going to pay you a stipend, and they're going to pay for your housing, and they're going to pay for school out of the GI Bill, correct? And you're living with uh, your right. parents, so you don't have any overhead. Yeah. Um, right. I don't know if we have to drive for Instacart. It doesn't seem like it. You've got and and you've got the disability coming in. Right. Um, it's just that um, you know I calculated my um, uh, my budget for. Uh, for next month, mm-hmm. and based on that, I'm only going to get be able to get a squeeze out like five hundred dollars for um, for savings, and that will have to go towards uh, paying the um, paying. Yeah, but the that's just deductible. that, Paul. Paul, that's just that month until you get your house sold, right? So, so for one month, whoopee, do that. You've got six. Okay. You've got seventeen thousand in debt, right? Once you sell this house, you'll be able to clear that debt. There'll be a few thousand left over. You can put that as your emergency savings. Over time, you'll be able to build and it back up. And then you need to work enough with your disability to pay your child support and get in school mm-hmm. and get going. Um, you should be fine with that. Um, I think what's happening is what I think I'm hearing, Paul, and I could be wrong. What I think I'm hearing is you've got a, a, a the normal emotions around a divorce, which is. Um, a broken heart and anger. Yeah. And you've got um, a disability from your military service. Mm-hmm. Thank you for your service. And in the middle of all of that, um, you've got 43 balls in the air. Yeah. And all I'm doing while we're talking is taking each one and setting them out of the air on the table. And then there's really not that much in the air anymore. You just sound uh, overwhelmed by yeah. the whole situation, and it's translating down into this career thing that's not even really an issue. I really think, you know, this sounds small, but I think it would go a long way for him to write down. Yes. First, I'm going to do this. Next, I'm going to do, like, write down everything that we talked about today, and that's your solution. And just getting it out of your head, having it written down, you have a written plan. Yep. Yep. That's going to make you feel a lot better tonight. Yeah, that'll help you go with the whole how do you eat an elephant thing a bite at a time. Because yeah. all I was doing was walking through prioritization in your life. What do you got to do? We got to eat. We got to have housing. You know, we've got to do this. We got to do that. And, and how do we lay out our future? We can survive a few months of, you know, $500 or $200 or whatever. And the house gets sold, mm-hmm. clears up everything. We get the divorce settled, done. We got the established child support. Mm-hmm. Um, the job you're driving in an hour and a half for, you don't need. No. And especially when you're not making anything with the courts taking half of that money. Yeah. So, I mean, that, that's the process I would look at. And uh, 
you know, how you need to make sure you're taking care of your kids. That's all I'm concerned about here. And that you take care of you and your future and that you execute step by step by step through this. So Jade's exactly right. Write it all out. And I think you'll develop a, uh, a bit of a flow chart on how to walk through each of these decisions. This is The Ramsey Show. home is one of the biggest decisions of your life. You need a partner like Churchill Mortgage. Churchill is one of the highest rated lenders in the country and they're Ramsey trusted because they do what's right for you. Churchill works with you to build a mortgage the Ramsey way. One that doesn't bust your budget, sets you up for financial success and helps you get out of debt faster. Go to churchillmortgage.com today and get started. Washaw Ramsey personality is my co-host today. Thank you for joining us, America. It's a free call at 888-825-5225. Well, taxes are upon us, folks. April the 18th, Tuesday, will be the federal tax return deadline. You've got to get your paperwork together. You've got to get your act together. April, October 16th is the deadline if you request an extension. Uh, however, always bear in mind you cannot request an extension on payment. If you owe taxes and you do not pay them by April the 18th, you will have penalties and late charges even if you file an extension. That's a good point. A lot of people don't realize that. So the income tax brackets went up in 2022 to account for inflation and will likely go up again in 23. The more a taxpayer earns, the more their earnings are subject to a higher rate. Well, it's always been that way. Mm -hmm. uh, we've got a whole explainer if you want to go and learn how the tax brackets work at RamseySolutions.com slash taxes. Lots of other stuff going on. That's right. It says that the IRS is also telling people that you should expect less this year. You know, in the prior years, especially those years, Dave, after 2020, uh, there were all of those economic impact packages. We got more of the cha child tax credit uh, that we saw. And good news is the pandemic is over. And so... What goes along with that is there's no, none of these extra payments, expanded tax credits and deductions like the tax credit and the charitable contributions deductions reverted to their pre-COVID-19 amounts. Uh, so taxpayers will not get this extra stimulus money. Uh, and that's something worth noting. And then I like this one. It says, how can people save money this tax season? Well, this is basically the same, I guess, every tax season. you got your tax deductions and your tax credits. So tax deductions are helping you lower the amount of your income that can actually be taxed. And then, so those are things like medical, charitable contributions, business expenses, that sort of thing. Then you've got your tax credit that are actually dollar amounts that are subtracted from the end of your tax bill, which is great because they're refundable. So you've got things like the earned income tax credit, the child tax credit, uh, education credit, those sorts of things. So, yeah, and here's the deal with the, if you're married filing jointly, you're up over 28,000 now on the standard deduction which means you would have to have itemized deductions in excess of 28000 to even bother to itemize. What type uh, of person is itemizing? Uh, someone who has a large uh, deductions and or yeah. has a lot of, has a business, um, has a lot of things like that. But it's only about 12% right now are itemizing, 88% mm -hmm. are not. Mm. So it's a, uh, you know, and so like your home mortgage interest is deductible, but not unless you don't claim the standard deduction. If you claim the standard deduction, then it's, you know, part of it, it was, uh, you just gave the bank some money is all you did. So, um, this thing, I'm not paying off my home mortgage because it's tax deductible <laughs> for 88% of you. That's an absolute bull crap line. 
Uh, it's just not true because you're not deducting the interest because you're taking a standard deduction instead. So mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. that's that's the whole thing. And you do not want a big refund. This is the... That's the moral of the story. This is the biggest con to have ever been put out on the American public. Someone convinced grown-ups that Santa Claus lives in Washington, D.C., that this money is coming to you as if it isn't a refund. You know how you get a refund? First you fund it, and then they refund it. Yeah. So a refund is when you take a shirt back at the store and they refund your money that you gave them earlier. Yeah. It's That's insulting. a refund. Oh, my God. How dumb are we? Yeah. We're walking around. I got a big refund. What's that mean? It means you paid in too much all year long and got no interest on your money while That's it sat in it Washington, D.C. That's dumber than a rock. <laughs> you don't want a big refund. That means you're a big dummy. Don't do that. Big refund Dave, means you I, paid in too much. But, Dave, that's my vacation fund. Well, but save your vacation <laughs> fund at the credit union, for God's sakes. You know, I mean, really. But, Dave, how am I supposed to buy my big screen TV? Uh, save up for it with the money you don't send to the government by not overpaying your taxes all year long and then getting it back in April and acting like Santa Claus brought you a gift. Okay. I know Santa Claus. I'm old. He's a friend of mine. He does not live in Washington, D.C. He even detests going to Washington, D.C. <laughs> because no. he figures they're all bad little boys and girls there anyway. Oh, so there you go. Right. <laughs> I'm just saying. So I'm oh, just sure man. that the refund had nothing to do with charity. Yeah. Yeah. None. Yeah. Nothing. Nada. Don't get a bit. So if you got a $2,400 refund, that means you paid in $200 a month too much out of your paycheck every month. That could have been money in your actual lifestyle. You could have paid off debt with it. Debt snowball. Yeah, man. I'd rather have it in my monthly You could have paid flow. for your increased gas prices. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Because when you when you let the refund come, you're, you, you are saying two things. You're saying, I don't mind loaning this money with no interest, which I don't think people really understand that. And two, you're saying that I need this money because I can't save money myself to do the things that I want to do, like go on vacation or buy that. TV, because that's what people do. They get this big hunk of money and they use it to do dumb stuff. Yeah, because it, they act like it's like the lottery or yeah. something. Like and all it, it was was like you put $20 in your coat and you <laughs> forgot it. <laughs> yeah, that's and right. And you put the coat on next winter and put your hand in there and you go, oh, I got 20 money. Bucks. Yeah. Who knew? <laughs> that's all it is. That's right. It's exactly. This. Oh, surprise. Yeah. Look at me. I'm well, rich. At least when you find it in your pocket, it's got some lint or like a, a, a cheese it or something. Well, with and it, it is but... your pocket. So you know who the dummy was, <laughs> right? True. Yeah. So that's the thing. So if you're ready to file your check taxes and you need to be ready to file your taxes, it's coming like this weekend. Yeah. So uh, you need to check out Ramsey Smart Tax. Uh, it lets you file online with low upfront pricing and no hidden fees. Plus, you can save up to 70% when you switch from other software. Go to RamseySolutions.com slash smart tax. We also have a tax guide blog article and a tax prep checklist at RamseySolutions.com slash taxes. And we have tax professionals that are endorsed local providers. If you have a complicated return, yes. they'll walk you through it. Yes. So just click on tax ELP at RamseySolutions.com. We can help you all the way around. We're not charging you extra, and we're not uh, TurboTax, which is going to try to sell you a credit card. Yes, that's right. They're going to try to get you in debt. Yeah. They, they real. That's actually the business they're in, so let's just be real clear. Yeah, and so, I mean, we're, we're, you can be assured that nothing from Ramsey is going to try to get you into debt. That's, <laughs> uh, we're quite the opposite that's around right. here. All right, Dave's in Boise. Hi, Dave. Welcome to the Ramsey Show. Hey, how's it going, guys? Better than we deserve. What's up? So I just need some recommendations and uh, on how to pay off my current mortgage uh, faster. I've got some options from my mortgage company, and then I got some options from investors. But I want to hear your take because my wife said you have all the answers. <laughs> I wish my wife would say that. <laughs> That's funny. Uh well, I, I don't have an answer, but I, I'm an expert on my opinion, so I can do that for you. Um, here, here's the thing. The main goal either way at the end of the story is which way it causes me to build wealth with the highest probability of it really happening and the fastest, shortest distance between two points is a straight line, right? So 
what what is the fastest right way to build wealth uh, not according to legend or theory but actual data and so that's the way i would couch the answer to this and so i would go to the ramsey millionaire study where we studied 10,000 millionaires and we asked them how they became millionaires uh the number of them that said we put money in an investment account in order to pay off our mortgage faster was very close to zero the vast majority of them said we steadily invested in our 401k while we paid off our house as fast as we could just by paying extra mortgage payments very simple and so there's no fancy way that you can trick the interest rates yeah big hairy principal payments big chunks on the mortgage makes the debt go away you can't trick the math that much there's no big math trick on this so just pay off your house as fast as you can that's what the data says this is the ramsey show Y'all, there's a lot you can't control when it comes to healthcare, but there is something you should check out that can help. Christian Healthcare Ministries. CHM is not insurance. It is budget-friendly, biblically-based health cost sharing. That means a community of members helping share the burden of each other's healthcare costs. They help people just like you in all 50 states. So see if CHM could be right for your family. Learn more today at chministries.org slash budget. Jade Washaw, Ramsey personality, is my co-host. Jay is in Savannah. Hi, Jay. Welcome to the Ramsey Show. How's it going, uh, Jade and Dave? Honored to speak to both of you. Uh, just got a question for you. I have a side hustle business that is making a, a good amount of money right now, and um, I'm all in when it comes to the joining of finances through marriage, but I wanted some kind of clarity and clarification since they're not the, the baby steps aren't necessarily – directly applicable to, uh, you know, say your business. Um, does the joining finances part of the baby steps, does that apply to, say, your business account, if that question makes sense? Not really. I mean, if you're thinking about from the from the aspect that you're taking money out of the business as your payroll, and then that's going into your personal account, yes. But if you run a business, like my husband runs a talent agency, and I know what's going on in the business, but I'm not, you know, I have access to the account, I suppose, if I wanted to see it, but I'm not, I'm not in there making withdrawals and I'm but you're not. On, you're on the account. I'm on it. That's what he's asking. Okay. Yeah, Ownership. That's, that's what, that's the. Ownership. Yeah, that's, okay. That's kind, of what I'm get, that's kind of what I'm getting at. You know, Sharon's on all the Ramsey accounts. Okay. All of them. And she has no idea what's in them or how to access them. <laughs> right. None whatsoever. <laughs> She doesn't come down here. I mean, um, she was here today for lunch with her nieces, but that's the, I mean, she doesn't come down here. Not because we're mad at her, not, but she just doesn't care. Well, that's what I'm saying. And it's I not mean, her thing. And But if I die, um, or if, you know, something happened to our marriage, she is half owner of all of this. Okay, that, that, makes, that makes sense. Uh, so you would say, um, kind of have their name on the business account, yeah. um, but not necessarily involved with. Um, you know, the inner workings of the business. Well, and here's the other thing. If I'm if I'm in Mexico and Sharon's here and they need her to come down here and sign a check, she can. That's a good point. Okay. So, I mean, there's all okay. kinds of the banker could she could authorize something for the banker if I'm sick. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, I mean, you don't want just one person on an account. That's you need to have someone else that can act in your in this case. She's not going to be involved in the transactions. Crap. I don't sign the checks. A machine signs mm -hmm. them now. Yeah. So uh, around here, but uh, of course, we I mean our payables are 
massive. Yeah. And so, uh, uh, but yeah, you, um, yes, uh, as far as ownership goes, all of the LLCs that we have, that we hold different assets in, including real estate and so forth, uh, Sharon is on all of those and on all of the accounts. And again, if it wasn't, she'd have to call our controller uh, who handles our personal stuff as well uh, mm-hmm. if something happened or she needed access to something to find out what's going on. Mm-hmm. Who happens to be one of her good friends, too, but that's that's a side issue. Uh, she keeps she keeps Debbie pretty close. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, That's I mean, good. yeah, that it's uh, as far as philosophically, from a practical, tactical thing, zero involvement. But philosophically, the own and, and legally, the ownership yeah. should be shared, and uh, and it's it's hers. It's hers as much as it's mine. Mm-hmm. Even though I'm the one that runs the business. That's right. That's good. He mentioned the baby steps and that kind of thing, but that's not really for business. That's well, baby steps don't have anything to do with whether you should have joint accounts or not. Right. But I think I, what I derived from it was like I'm like I'm not speaking into Sam's how he's spending the money in the business. It's not part of my day to day. I'm just on the accounts. Well, again, I just have ownership. That's the same thing as Sharon. She does not. She does not know where we buy copier paper. Yeah. You know, it doesn't come up. <laughs> doesn't come up at dinner. You know. So Jason is with us. Jason is in Anchorage, Alaska. Hi, Jason. Welcome to the Ramsey Show. Hi, Dave and Jade. Thanks for having me. Uh, appreciate your time. I'm a fairly uh, new listener, and um, I'm calling in to get a little advice on you on what I should be doing with my savings to make it work for me other than what I'm currently doing with it. <clears throat> I have about $170,000 in a high yield savings account at about 5%. So I'm earning about uh, somewhere between 700 to $740 in interest a month. Um, That's a nice savings. What should I be doing? Yeah, thank you. What should I be doing with it to make it work for me other than what I'm doing currently? Should I be investing in I-bonds? Should I be investing in the stock market? Should I be looking into purchasing real estate? What's the purpose of the savings? Are you saving for a home or is this just money that you like having around? Um, um, honestly, the latter. Um, it's, it's just savings currently. Okay. So no debt, nothing like that? Um, I'm currently debt free. Mm-hmm. Um, I do not own any properties currently. Um, I have a Roth 401 that has about 42,000 in it. I have a 401k that has about 22,000 in it. Mm-hmm. Okay. And you said it's 117, 170,000. Is that correct? Mm-hmm. Correct, Dave. Okay. So if you made 10% on it, that'd be 17,000 a year. And you're currently making about 8,000 a year. Roughly. Yeah. Okay. So you're losing about $10,000 a year by not having it invested in good mutual funds. Correct. Yeah. So I, I would sit down with a smart investor pro and get this money invested in some good mutual funds and start earning north of 10% on average year in and year out, mm-hmm. uh, which is about $10,000 a year difference in what you're doing right now. So your high yield savings is, uh, what about 4%? Uh, I think it's 5.02% currently. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah. Well, keep and, aside- infla- and inflation's running nine, so you're going backwards. Whew. Make yeah, sure you do keep aside three to six months for normal emergency fund purposes. Do you have an emergency rainy day fund in I- addition to this? Actually, yes, I left that out. I, I do have an emergency fund of, I think, 42000 right now. Yeah. You need to get with a smart investor pro at RamseySolutions.com. Sit down, start learning about mutual funds. And what we're discussing here, Jason, is a concept in investing called opportunity cost. When you put the money in a fruit jar and it could have been making 10% and it's $100,000, you miss the opportunity for that $100,000 to make $10,000 a year. That's lost opportunity cost. Or if you take $100,000 and go buy a new Mercedes with it, instead of investing, you not only have a car that's going down in value now, but you also lost the opportunity. The opportunity cost on the money is whatever it could have earned in a good investment. Call it 10% for this example. Yeah. Uh, my m- personal mutual funds do considerably more than 10% average per year. Haven't lately. No, I know the market's down. I'm aware, but I don't sell when it's down. I buy when it's down because it's on sale. So I'm in investing this money with a long-term mentality 
uh, and riding out downturns, sit it out, let it come back up, and you'll make a good average that's well in excess of your high yield savings account. The interesting thing about the high yield savings account is the very name is an oxymoron. High yield. It's not really that high. <laughs> yeah, it's. Yeah. Yeah, the inter- inflation rate, by the way, for the last 75 years has averaged 4.2 before yeah. we got into this last Biden inflation run. That's the point I think a lot of people miss is when you've got that money sitting there, obviously the worst place for it to be is like in a can in your backyard because you're just losing you're losing out on it. It's not worth that because of the inflation. But even just sitting in a high yield savings account, people think, oh, I'm doing great. I've got 5% or 4.5%. Well, because you could only get one before. Yeah. These high yield savings accounts are doing really well. If you've now, got some short term. Now they are. If you've got some short term money you want to park for like a year. Sure. You're going to buy a house next year. Yeah. Well, that, that's a 5% is a lot more than 1%. Yeah. That's good. But that's not a good long term play. Right. Even for a couple of years, though, saving for a house, right? Yeah. Up to yeah. about Sure. Four or five years, you could do that. Absolutely. I completely agree. Yeah. But the thing is, what you don't want to do is say, over a period of 10, 15, 20 years, I'm going to make 5% while inflation runs four. And after taxes and inflation, I'm going backward. Yeah. You're going way far back. Yeah. And especially when we're in a 9% inflationary market. Yeah. So, um, yeah. 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 Because this is real out there right now. This, Mm -hmm. uh, This crazy, screwed up backward economy. Yeah. It's uh, simultaneously, there's people doing really good in one area of their life, and they're losing their butts in another area of their life with the stuff that's going on. So you have to really be careful and steady and wise and predictable. And this is where money comes from. Jade Washaw, Ramsey Personality, is my co-host this day here on The Ramsey Show. Marshall Ramsey Personality is my co-host today. Thank you for joining us, America. We're so glad you're here. Open phones at 888 825 If you like the show, help us by clicking the subscribe or follow button on your YouTube or podcast screen, please. That will be a big help. Leave a five-star review. Mama said if you ain't got anything nice to say, don't say anything at all. So five-star reviews are welcome. The rest of you should just move on and find something you like. <laughs> we used to say, keep my name out your mouth. <laughs> Ooh, I like that. That's good. If you don't have anything nice to say. Ouchia. Ouchia. That's good. That's Ouch good. I like it. And, uh, of course, the other thing you can do, share the show. Click the share button, share the link, or uh, just share where you're listening to the show, which radio station or television station or TBN or whatever it is that you're listening and watching. Let people know, please. We would appreciate it. It is You are our marketing plan. Uh, we're not spending $300 million a year. We don't have our own football stadium like Sophie. Um, <laughs> Gesundheit. Yes, pardon me. But yeah, um, <laughs> it's uh, there's other people that do that buy your love. Uh, we just uh, take care of you and love you. And then you uh, will spread the word for us. We know you'll do it. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Sarah is in Reno. Hi, Sarah. How are you? Hi. Yeah, good evening. How you guys doing? doing Better good. than we deserve. How can we help? Um. So... I am kind of in a pickle-ish, pickle-ish. So, <laughs> um, I, um, I currently work in the dental field um, as an RDA. Um, I make roughly about 4200 a month um, if I work a full month. I'm, um, I'm sorry, I'm ignorant. Hours. What is an RDA? Oh, I'm um, sorry, registered dental assistant. Thank you. Okay, I'm, I feel yeah, better no now. Okay. <laughs> Um, so, um, I make about 4,200 a month. If I work a full month of about, you know, 40 hours a week, um, 
the thing is about every other month, the doctor that I work for will take about a week off, which um, turns my income to about 3700 to 3900 a month. Um, some of the benefits I get from working there is I get um, a 401k Roth with employer match of 3%. Um, I have 16 paid vacation days and then free to discounted dental. Um, recently, I took on a second job um, as a server at a restaurant, and um, I've only been there maybe about two weeks, <laughs> and I was offered um, an assistant manager position. So for the assistant manager position, um, the offer is 6600 a month, um, so it's salary-based. Um, with a $500 bonus each month, um, and I only the only benefit is medical. There's no 401k, um, no vision or dental, and there also is like paid sick days and paid vacation days. How old are you? I'm 32. When you're 52, which one are you going to be wanting that you're glad you did? So that's kind of where I'm at. I I love working in dental. Um, I don't. I've you know, but. Where I work, I think I've I've outgrown it. Well, is there uh, another practice you could pursue? I mean, if this person is taking off work so often, it's making your income fluctuate. Have you kind of looked to see what else is out there in that same field? I'm guessing you went to school for this. I did. Um, yeah, I have. I have no debt. Um, I've, I've been debt free for um, actually a year now, and I'm on baby step three. Very good. Um, so, I mean. I could, but the thing is, I wouldn't be making as much money. And I don't want you, you know, to do this for the that, money. I don't, I don't want a, you. I don't yeah. want you to do this. I don't. I don't know if you're going to be making more money or not. You haven't looked. You yeah, haven't the asked. Only thing, well, no, no. I have. I have researched around where I work now and um, in Reno, and i I wouldn't I wouldn't be making much more. Um, but but here's here's my biggest factor that's kind of has me on the fence is I'm a single mom of four. Mm-hmm. So. <laughs> I, I like my server position. Um, everyone I work with seems to be really awesome. So I, I guess my dilemma is like I'm not so much worried about the 401k because I could you know roll it over into an IRA. Listen, and the, the benefit the benefits, the benefits don't matter. More. The benefits don't matter, sir. Yeah. What matters is if you if you take a job making twice what you're making now, and you in, and it is not a long term play, then you have to have an exit strategy, and. Mm-hmm. Uh, you did not wake up six weeks ago and say, I want to be a restaurant manager. Yeah. You fell into this. This was not an act of intentionality. No. You did not seek this out to fulfill a dream of being a restaurant manager. No. Right? I haven't. No, I, have, I wasn't a, a dream Which tells of me the only thing, the, the, the number one thing that's attracting you is the money. Well, here's the thing. Why can't you? Why can't you do the the RDA job and and keep looking and see what else is out there that maybe pays higher? Maybe it doesn't. At the very least, you might find uh, a dentist that you're working with that's not taking so many days off. You know, that's closing up the office. Um, but why can't you just? If you like this restaurant so much, why can't you just work there on Saturdays? Or you know, um, as a side, you know, I mean, just something you're doing on the side. Why does it have to be your full time job? Because can't can't you take your salary that you're making from the dental thing, and can't you take whatever little side hustle money, and can't that equal the same thing that doing the restaurant full time equals? Yeah. So that's the thing. Is like right now I'm working at the restaurant and um, as an RDA, and I'm making. I mean, I just started again. I just started the server position, but I. But as you know, when I did the math, I I make about sixty five hundred to seven thousand um, with both jobs. But I'm working sixty two hours a week. What does, what does the manager's job number of hours entail? Um, it would be forty five to fifty hours a week. So I'd be working uh, five days a week, and then um, but yeah, so I'd be working less. Maybe. And so it would give me more time with my kids. Because I'm, I mean, I'm stretched right now. It's just, I guess a lot of it is like, I can save this money, get get my baby step three moving way faster, be able to save more, um, to buy, to you know, to purchase a home here within you know the next year and a half or two years, um, and just, I just want to put my kids and every and me and on the right track and just, I mean, I love dental, but I just, I don't know. I I think I'm just kind of outgrowing it, and I've. 
I have like wanted to be. Yeah, in I a assume. I assume you have a. Uh, I just. I assume I just you have a certification. I do. And what my does license, it? Um, what does it, it take to maintain it, the certification? It's, I just um, go online, I pay it, and it's renewed every two years. So even if I went out of dental, I would be able to go back if it didn't work out. At any time. That's what I'm thinking, yeah. Yep, at any time. Because here, here's and what, I, here's what I, so. I, you're in the honeymoon phase over there, so you don't see any downsides. Mm -hmm. um, and I got to tell you, the restaurant business is some of the hardest work you'll ever get in in your life. Yep. Very hard work. And yeah, when they tell when they tell you fifty I, when they tell you fifty hours, they don't mean it. Mm -hmm. Especially in management, you're going to be because as there. soon as a server mm -hmm. doesn't show on a shift when you're not there, mm -hmm. they're going to call you as the assistant manager come in and cover for the server. Mm -hmm. You're going to be there more than fifty hours, and you're on salary. Oh. Mm -hmm. oh yeah, so then it's like yeah, Dave is not wrong about that. And I, I just don't want you to. You're all starry-eyed about this, Sarah, and I, I, I'm not trying to I'm kill nervous. your dream, but I don't think it's I'm as plush. It's not as plush as you think it is, but if you want to go do it, it's not the end of the world, because here's the thing. You probably can go get a job as a dental assistant in about 20 minutes if this doesn't work out. Yeah, and I'm, I'm great at my job. I mean, I do. I mean, you I can get a job in that field. No you, problem. Yeah. You can get a job in that field almost any time at will. And um, I think yeah. you'll be able to find that if something happens here. So, yeah, I'm going to give proper notice, and I guess you go try it. But I want you to try it with a little bit more. I mean, you're, you're acting like this is some kind of huge upgrade mm -hmm. in lifestyle and huge upgrade in money, and it's not any of that. Have you really yeah, played the numbers out of this? Like, have you ever written this out and really looked at how it's going to move the needle for you or is this just something that's been floating around in your brain if you haven't done that get it on paper and really play out the numbers to what your goals are you said that you want to get your emergency fund you said you want to save for a house play out these numbers and see where you land i think that you might realize it's not the leap that you think it's going to be yeah it's okay to try it but i I disagree with the level of excitement you've got over it. <laughs> and Facts. I want you to win. I love you. I want you to do great, okay? I want you to be out there. But I, I think um, you, you got a pretty plush gig now. The one you're going into is a lot tougher. This is The Ramsey Show. Dave here. You can find all of our shows with The Ramsey Network app on your smartphone. It's the only place to listen to the entire back catalog of episodes. Download The Ramsey Network app in your favorite app store today. Live from the headquarters of Ramsey Solutions, broadcasting from the pods of moving and storage studios, it's the Ramsey Show where we help people build wealth, do work that they love, and create actual amazing relationships. This is The Ramsey Show. The phone number is 888-825-5225. Jade Washaw, Ramsey personality, is my co-host. Nate is in Baltimore. Hi, Nate. How are you? Hey, Dave. Jade, how are you guys? Doing Better good. than we deserve. What's up? Oh, great. Glad to hear that. Uh, I'm calling because uh, my wife and I just recently, very recently, got out of uh, debt after a long journey here. And um, we're, we're wondering if we should uh, continue to rent and remain debt free, or if we should, uh, would you recommend us go ahead and buying a house that we've been wanting for a long time? Um, and if so, are you cool with us spending 800 k on it? Because the housing, housing prices here in Maryland are through the roof and the kind of house we want is sort of in that range. And then in addition, if we buy, what should we work on next? Is it the mortgage or what would you recommend? I mean, are you guys, it sounds like you kind of have been, are you a listener of our steps? It sounds like you've been walking through the steps. You're out of baby step two. Do you have three to six months saved of expenses? Uh, we, we, we do. Okay. Yeah, that's good. Do. All right. Have you worked on a down payment separate from that three to six months? Yeah. So we, our, our down payment is, is going to be, and the three to six months is all lumped into uh, what we obtained from the sale of our house. That's kind of how we 
finish off our day. It's all lumped in from, sorry, I missed that last part. The it's lumped in from what? House. what? Oh, okay. So how much money is in your account right now? Um, about 160K. Okay. okay. How much of that is your, th- how much is that should be your rainy day fund? Uh, yeah, I didn't do the math on that. So okay. Three to here. six months of your monthly expenses. What's your household income? So we're 280K. Okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, probably three to six months of expenses might be uh, like 40,000 bucks. You set that aside and never touch it. It's just for emergencies. Okay. Okay. You said you had 160 in there. So that leaves us 120 to put down. Did I do that right? Mm -hmm. That's right. Okay. And you make really, really good money. Congratulations. And so if we, uh, and the house you sold, uh, sold for how much? 380. Okay. So you're doubling house going from 400 to 800. Yeah. Okay. Which also tells me that there are $400,000 houses in Baltimore. That's a good point. <laughs> oh, I said you would say that. Oh, just, just for anyone wondering. Yeah. No, I, <laughs> just, just, just in case I just, you know, just in case I ever hear any rationalizing language coming out of you again. Mm-hmm, <laughs> mm-hmm, mm-hmm. However, I think you can actually afford an $800,000 house with the guidelines that we use. Yeah. So, you know, the way we teach is we want you, we don't want your payment to be any more than 25% of your take home. And I mean, that's everything included. We're talking about your taxes, On a your insurance. Year. Yep. On a 15 year. So put down 120,000 on 800. That's going to put us at 680. The payment on a 15-year fixed that is no more than a fourth of your take-home pay, mm-hmm. we are okay with with the goal then of putting 15% of your income into retirement and starting to with any other income you can get your hands on. Let's go ahead and pay that house off in the next few years and make that part of your wonderful wealth building plan. Mm -hmm. And Nate, there's a great calculator we have. It's called how much home can I afford? And you can really put the numbers in there and see it and play around with that uh, because there's, you can probably afford 800, you know, thousand dollar house. You you can afford a $680,000 mortgage making 280 with the numbers we're talking Mm -hmm. about. Mm -hmm. That's exciting. You can do that. I mean, because you're making, is this money, is this income stable? Yes, it's stable. Good. Okay. Yeah, you did great, man. You're killing it. So, yeah, you, you, the numbers will work, but you ought to run them out for yourself to be sure. Mm-hmm. The point of this all is a 15-year fixed, you can get paid off in 8 or 10, uh, and where your payment is only a fourth of your take-home pay, that gives you all kinds of wiggle room to make sure your investing is happening, the next car you pay for in cash, the next vacation you pay for in cash. Mm -hmm. And by the way, this year, Christmas will be in December, and you pay that in cash. That's right. So stuff doesn't sneak up on you. You leave room in your budget to be able to pay cash for things so there's no future debt sneaking up on you because you became house poor. Right. And that's the whole reason for this formula. But I think you're in good shape. I think you're able to do it. That's exciting. That's really exciting stuff. Very well. Cool. Susie is next up in San Antonio. <laughs> Hi, Susie. How are you? Hi. Hello. Hello. I cannot believe I'm on here. Well, That's we're great. glad you're here. Okay. How can we help? To you all the time. Yes. Um, so I just probably had like two questions. Should I help my boyfriend pay off his debt? I know no. you're very against that. We're not, no. We're not. <laughs> no. Let me get I thought you said no. you listened no, to this show. I I I listen to you for I mean I could I I I know I know I I hear um but let me give you a little background no. um, we've been together <laughs> Okay well let me okay no. we've been together for about 6 <laughs> years we I have a I have a son and we've been living together for that amount of time uh we bought land I'm sorry, together how, how we paid it off uh how old I am 30 No how old is the he boy is How old is your son with this he man is six. He is okay. six, six years old. Okay, so why aren't we've been we married? For about five years. Why aren't we married? Um, that we I know we're doing everything backwards. We plan on we're not going to have this huge wedding. We're just going to do probably go to the courthouse and then so Friday you know, go to <laughs> Friday. I mean, I wish we Friday. could go Friday. It's been um, six years. Even, Painter, get off the ladder. If you get married on Friday, you can pay off his debt on Friday. The, well, that's true. That's true. The, well, the reason why is not because we're trying to save up for our future home. Being married does not prohibit you from saving. Look, all it causes of this, you to save. Yes. You're okay. talking about good. Th- what you're talking about are, are good ideas, but they need to be done the correct mm-hmm. way. All right. You guys, right. And it's, mm-hmm. you're, sa- you're saving up for a house right now. You're putting aside money. He's putting aside money. There's no house until you get married right now. You're trying to pay off mm-hmm. debt. He's paying off his debt. You're paying off your debt until you get married. 
And I know that it feels like you're already married because you got a kid and you're probably living together and all these things. But legally, that's not the case. You're you're completely leaving yourself vulnerable. Mm -hmm. I love you too much to do that. It's um, if you were my little sister, I would say, don't pay this guy's bills unless you're married to him. Mm -hmm. And I think you I I think you're already married. I think you're already married in everything except legal. Mm hmm. Right. Basically, I mean, so you we, need to just do it. Put the bills on everything, and I so do it. I'm I'm debt free. I I I've paid off everything, so I know like if I help them, we can finish by the end of Friday, December. Friday, Susie. Like, I've, Friday. <laughs> yeah. What's stop? Hey, what's stopping it? Is it you, or is it him, or is it I, both? No, I I think it it, it it's him. I think it's mainly because he doesn't have the money to give me like I guess the ring or the wedding or whatever. He gave it is. you a he kid. Have... <laughs> I know, right? No, no, no. This this <laughs> actually isn't his. It's not his kid. Oh, it's, he's uh, he's the stepfather. Yes, yes. I thought you said it. Then I thought you said you've been together not. that long. Definitely. No, don't this guy's a keeper. About, like, this is a guy's a I, keeper. He's raising somebody else's kid. Yeah. Rope him. Exactly. Friday. Exactly. Exactly. But don't pay off that debt before. Don't you write checks on him to you. No, you do not pay other people's bills until you're married. (laughs) You will get burned. You'll change the tone, the tenor, the feel of the relationship. If you want to screw up a friendship, loan somebody a bunch of money. Messes up everything. Mm -hmm. Don't do it. Go get married Friday and solve this. I'm excited to announce a huge event that we're doing here at the Ramsey Event Center in May. Um, Mike Rowe from Dirty Jobs and I have, uh, over the last two or three years, had a lot of wonderful conversations and become friends. We have this, both uh, have a love affair with hard work, work ethic, persistence, perseverance. So, We know that in today's crazy world, small business owners are facing setbacks everywhere they turn. Since 2021, we've seen 4 million people a month leave their jobs. Political economist Nick Eberstadt tells us there are 7 million able-bodied males. My copy says men, but I'm going to call them males because they're able-bodied males opting to sit at home Mm. being supported by someone else instead Mm. of working. They are not in the unemployment statistics because they're not actively seeking employment. So why are people giving up on work? There's this drift to mediocrity that is plaguing America right now because people aren't finding meaning in their work because socialism and this idea that someone owes me a something, a participation trophy is on the rise. Our government told us, told some of you that you were not essential I don't know of any more demeaning, dignity-stealing phrase that we've come up with than you are not essential. And uh, decades of bad leadership, bad government, decreased engagement, quiet quitting, the great resignation. This is chaos, people. Productivity is down. Complacency is at an all-time high. And small business owners are stuck in the middle of it all. They're trying to hire in a market where there's just very few hardworking people looking Mm -hmm. for a job. And they don't know how to move forward without a team to charge the gates of hell with them. But the antidote to fear is hope. And we need a healthy dose of hope. So here's what we're going to do. On Thursday, May the 4th, I'm teaming up with Mike Rowe and five best-selling authors and experts on the state of work in America today. We're going to address this labor crisis head on. And we're going to give business leaders solutions for how to find and hire the right people in this environment right here at Ramsey. We're going to do this at the Ramsey event center right here on the hill behind me. So if you're a business leader, you do not want to miss this event in Ramsey's brand new event center. Again, micro and I, and uh, this is on Thursday night, May the 4th. It will be 
Thursday evening at dinner on on up into the night. Tickets start at $79, and you can register starting today at RamseySolutions.com slash events. You need to be at this event. $79 is a deal. This is some world-class thought leaders in this space, and this is a trouble spot in America right now. And we've got some really good ideas on how to help with it, not just name call, not just poke fun. Uh, although those two things would be really easy here. I'm ready. So RamseySolutions.com slash events. Thomas is in Washington. Hi, Thomas. Welcome to the Ramsey Show. Hey, thank you guys for taking my call. Sure. Mm-hmm. Um, I just want your thoughts about people who uh, retire early and retire out of the country um, and live very well on their retirement for very cheap in different countries. I think they're called expats. Well, expat is not just living out of the country. Expat means you have given up your American citizenship Mm -hmm. to avoid taxation. That means expatriate, like you are no longer a patriot. That's what expat means. So uh, I, I, I would not do that. But I would, you know, if you want to live in another country because the cost of living is low and you want to live in Costa Rica or you want to live in Mexico and some of the spots are really right. nice, uh, right. you know, I'm very aware of several people doing that. I've got friends that live in Cabo full time. Uh, and, yes, the cost of living is way mm-hmm. less. And uh, you're, But as an American citizen, you're always going to have your taxes. You're not getting out of that. Uh, but, okay. uh, you know, now – Granted, if there is a low cost of living in another country, there's some things yeah. that go with that. Facts. Okay. A lower standard of living. Where do you have in mind, Thomas? Uh, like Costa Rica, Ecuador, yeah. um, uh, not Venezuela, that's for sure. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, Mexico is, is good. Maybe uh, an Asian country like Thailand or yeah. Vietnam, very cheap. <laughs> Yeah. Have you been, just do your research and, and go to these places and, you know, what and I see would how do, you feel? What I would do is a couple things. One is I would go to the area that – narrow it down to two or three areas and go rent a house uh-huh. there for a month. A month, okay. Mm-hmm. Not just a week, a month. Yeah. To where your your mm-hmm. pulse rate changes, mm-hmm. you your body adjusts to the rhythm of the culture that you're living in. Cool. And mm-hmm. um, it, I, I've got a buddy that owns 1,000 acres in Costa Rica. It's actually hectares, but not acres. But um, and uh, he he's planning to do what you do. And when he goes down there, he says his pulse rate changes, but he has to stay several weeks for that to happen. Mm. And here's the deal: you can build a yeah. a, a, a compound, so to speak, have a very nice okay. property, and the cost of labor might be really low. So you might have lots of folks helping you inside the property right. as maids right. or as chefs or doing the lawn work or whatever. But when you leave sure. the compound, when you leave your property, you're going to go to a different standard of living than you are in the state of Washington. Mm-hmm. So you've got to enjoy sure. the culture, the yeah. culture, the shopping, the restaurants. You've got to be fine with all of that and yeah. you can be i'm not saying you can't but and but the my, idea the my idea other that concern guys is the uh like health care in different countries too. Mm-hmm. exactly that's yeah. a, that's a that's a yeah. part of it yeah that's a part yeah. of it and and you okay. know you're gonna uh but it, it's quite an adventure and i don't i don't uh I, I would not do it because I hate America. I, I would do it because it's a fun no, adventure. Not, no, I don't hate it. I love America. I love America. <laughs> okay. I'm just saying, yeah. I, I'm just, I, you asked my yeah. opinion, so I'm telling you. But yeah. the, uh, uh, I, and I wouldn't do it to, to become an expatriate yeah. to where I don't oh, have, you know, I lose my, my citizenship to give up on taxes. Okay. That's not the point. I'm not trying to hide. I'm not trying to become, get no, off no, the no, grid. No, no, no. I'm just trying to enjoy a, High, I mean, a good standard of living for a lot less money. Yeah. Man, I would love to be able to have a property outside of the United States and keep a residence in yeah. the United States. That, for me, would be the best of both worlds. And you can divide up your time. I don't know what Thomas's money situation is like, but that, to me, is where it's at. But I would um, spend, based on the, the, the circles I run in, the mistakes that people have made or where they thought it was something until they lived there. And so go live there yeah. before you drop, you know, a half million dollars, a million dollars, whatever it is, into a property. 
um, and or because there's a honeymoon. Thousand, whatever there's a honeymoon period too well, when you're you just gotta, enamored. Yeah, you got to get you got to start to understand. Like, you know, if you live in Cabo and you call a plumber, okay, yeah, it's not three hours. It's three days. What, before they come? <laughs> yeah. Wow. Okay. So. Yeah. You need that's... To, and maybe. <laughs> that's the other thing. So. It's True a, that. It's a different cult. I mean, you know, when when they say in Jamaica, no problem, man. Yes. That, means, no time. that means I ain't coming. Yeah. Yeah. That's island time right there. Island it means time I am is smoking different. pot. I am not going to come help you. That's what that means. That's, <laughs> so that's true. You, you gotta have consider to, you, you got to, you, you know, so somebody that's wired like me where the trains run on time and I like high service and <laughs> I like, I like to, you know, the, I like the water to not get empty on my table while I'm at a restaurant. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I'm not demanding. I'm just spoiled. Yeah. And so, you know, you just got to have a little more laid back mentality no if you're going to be in a different culture <laughs> because, uh, uh, you know, some some of the uh, Caribbean cultures don't run on the same speed sure. that we yeah. run on in the U.S., and uh, most of them don't. Yeah. And it's quite wonderful uh, as long as you adjust your expectations to it. Mm-hmm. So that that's the point. So live there a little while. It'll uh, it'll uh, help you make a better decision where, wherever it is, whether it's Thailand or uh, whatever. And consider politics, too. Yeah, I'd be worrying about the politics. Yeah, I would be. And the stability of the government yep, in all the that. particular location, all those kinds of things. This is the Ramsey Show. Marshall Ramsey personality is my co-host today in the lobby of Ramsey Solutions on the Dead Free Stage. Scott and Sherry are with us. Hey guys, how are you? Hey, good. Great. Welcome, welcome. Where do you guys live? Uh, Brooktondale, New York. Love it. And welcome to Nashville. How much debt have you paid off? Sixty-four thousand eight hundred and two dollars and eighty-eight cents. Very All good. Right. How long did this take? 28 months, 26 days. I <laughs> love it. And uh, what was your range of income during that two and a half years? 91 to 99,000. Cool. cool. What do y'all do for a living? I'm a teacher aid bus driver. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm a registered nurse. Very good. Good for you guys. What kind of debt was your 65,000? <laughs> Three credit cards, personal loans, student loans, two vehicles. You were wow. normal. We were. And normal sucks, and you discovered that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. I don't want to be normal anymore. No. Broke through. Okay, 28 months ago. How long have y'all been married? 27 years. 27 years, but 25 years into the marriage, you looked up and said, this plan's got to change. Tell me what happened. Um, I, had a, I had Facebook for the first time, and I saw one of my friends had posted um, pictures of her and her family holding wads and wads of money, and they paid cash for a new to them SUV. And I said, how did you do that? You know, cause that was something that I always wanted to do. My- wads and wads of money is good. Yeah. yeah like all of them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, and cause I always thought that buying a car with cash was what older people did, not people my age and younger. Or rich people or something. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yes. Yep. So I approached Scott and said, you know, I think that we could do this. And I ended up um, totaling up all of our debt. Uh Uh-oh. And I told him about it, and uh, I think the rest is history. (laughs) So what was your reaction, Scott, when she comes to you with... $65,000! It was overwhelming. Um, And I read your book, and we took off, and I knew that I had to finish this. I had to do it. It was something that I've watched people do, and we decided... We got to give it a shot, and we never stopped. We took FPU, um, and I promised the FPU teacher that I would do this. That would be here. <laughs> wow. I love it. 
So. Very cool. Very cool. Where did you take Financial Peace University? Um, in Ithaca, New York. Okay. At your church or a church? Or? It was through a church. A yeah. church. Okay. Yeah. Very mm-hmm. good. Mm-hmm. Very, cool. very cool. Okay. So this all starts with an f- innocent Facebook post. Who knew? <laughs> good things can come from Facebook. That's right. It's the first I time. I just found one. <laughs> yeah. Yep. It can actually happen. I agree. I agree. <laughs> all right. Wads and wads of cash. We pay cash for an SUV. So Sherry wow. says, uh, hey, friend, how'd you do this? And she said, those Ramsey people. People, mm-hmm. And you get the total money makeover book, which leads you into a financial peace class. Have I got this right? Yep. yep. And we're now financial peace university teachers through our wow. well, co- coordinators, coordinators through our uh, church. Woo! Yeah. Where? What's your church? Hillside Alliance. All right. You need to Love go to his. You need to just go to Scott and Sherry's class. They're professionals. They paid off sixty-five thousand dollars in debt, and they have wads and wads of cash. <laughs> <laughs> Not yet. But. We're working on that. Yeah. I love it. Way to go, you two. Very so cool. proud of y'all. Thank you. So when you guys were getting out of debt, what did you find? Did you find that man? It's our income. We've got to do things to get more money in, or was it really getting on a budget and decreasing, you know, your outgo? It was getting on the budget. We were already following the Every Dollar um, app mm-hmm. and paying for that. And then we just did the class to give us even more inspiration and more push. Um, so, and then just cutting back on a lot of things. Like, we love to go out to dinner. Mm. There and it we, is. We love to travel. Um, so, we cut back on all of that. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. The best camping trip we had was when we took our camper debt free hey. to a free campsite somewhere and just stayed in our camper nobody else's yeah i like it that's good that. nobody yeah. else owns it yeah. Yeah. yeah meaning you got it paid off and now we own the truck that pulls it and the subaru that got us here okay. and it, it's unbelievable yeah feels different the cars drive different without a payment <laughs> <laughs> they do i you know i can hit a deer which are you know it's very common up in new york Did and you I'm like, have you hit one in the past. Okay, but not, not lately. Okay. Not well, lately, no. <laughs> that kind of no. happens in Tennessee, too. They're, they're, <laughs> like, they're like rats around here. They're everywhere. Yeah. I was yeah. the spender. You know, it was always me. I ate out more than I should, and it showed in two ways. We, <laughs> we were broke, and so. And Pants the shirt got so yeah. 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 I don't know anybody like that, Scott. Just keep that to yourself, will you? Okay. Uh, yeah. Oh, my gosh. Way to go, you guys. Very good. Way to go. How's it feel? to be free for the first time in 27 years. It feels it feels really good. My dad always told me, especially when we pulled up into the driveway with a new car, new to us car, um, he was always like, slave to the lender, slave to Ooh. the lender. And I was like, uh, like, yeah, I'm. that's normal. That's, that's no way I can afford a car. Mm-hmm. <laughs> wow. Mm-hmm. Now you can afford one, though. Now we can afford one. If you live like no one else, later you can live and give like no one else. Yeah, and I think that that, I mean, besides paying off the debt, um, giving was our, that was our, oh, that's our ultimate goal. Mm. It is kind of fun. <laughs> it is fun. <laughs> so what? <laughs> yes, <that>. it is. <laughs> <laughs> so, so what's sure. next for you? Like, what's on your docket? Like, what's that thing that you're like, okay, we're debt free. Now it's go time on this. Uh, the roof is leaking and we're going to pay cash for that. Hey, love it. I, I that's just really, that. yeah, that's awesome. That, yeah. That's a great feeling. It really is. Yeah. Okay, so talk to people, because uh, you guys have been married 27 years. I've been married 40. Talk to people that have been married uh, a couple decades. How did it change after 25 years of marriage when you start working on this? How did it change your relationship? We got closer. Hmm. Our our kids, our, we, our younger kid um, graduated HVAC school, heating, ventilation, air conditioning, mm-hmm. and watch this whole process. And he will never have a credit card, or he'll be, he wants to be debt free like us. Mm. And it's changed our future, but it's hopefully going to change his forever. So Amen. it's yeah. Um, yeah. just. Yeah. But there were a lot of mornings that we would get up and sit with our with your book open and we would with our bibles open and study and read those verses over and over again and you know just work on that and praying the the Mm. promises of god over your life yes and now you see a whole different you catch a whole another gear in your marriage and in your relationship um you don't have any payments you can be generous you've changed your family tree because your kids are watching and now they're changing and not going to do it it's pretty incredible the uh, the effect that all of this has from 
one mm-hmm. stinking Facebook post. <laughs> well, and, and can I call out something in you guys' character that's that's worth calling out? A lot of people would have seen that post, Sherry, and gone, oh, must be nice, and hated on it and thought, well, that's. but you asked how. I and I think that that's something that is just so, mm. Um, mm. there's not a stitch of pride in that. It's so humble to go, well, how'd you do it? And not be mad at him and not be jealous at him and not, well, must be nice. Because so many people would do that. And I just think that right there is incredible. Well, they, very, gave very well us, done. they gave us the book that I read as well. Yeah. So when she said that, that was the book that was handed to me. And, oh, wow. Okay. And Amazing. They still hand books out today. They sold a house and left a book in wow. the house, in the drawer, and they sold it. And so they sort of do those little tricks along the way. So hopefully someday we can do something like that. Yeah. I love that. Johnny Total Money Makeover Seed. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I like it. <laughs> I like it. I love it a lot. Mm-hmm. Well done. Well done. Very cool. Well, speaking of books, we've got the Live and Give bundle for you guys, the Total Money Makeover for you to give away. And like it's happened for you, pay it forward. And uh, we're going to help you do that by giving you that. The uh, Baby Steps Millionaire's book, because that's your next step. Mm -hmm. And uh, Financial Peace University, since you're uh, coordinators, we're going to give you a membership. You can give that to somebody. I'm sure you know a single mom or somebody that's deserving that needs some help and get them going. So you'll find good uses for all of that. You guys are special. You're amazing people. We're so proud of you. Thank you for coming. Thank you. All right, Scott and Sherry, Ithaca, New York, 65000 paid off in 28 months, making 91 to 99. Count it down. Let's hear a debt-free scream. Three, two, two one. We're debt-free. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's all. that's done. <laughs> this is The Ramsey Show. Scripture of the day, Psalms 143.10, teach me to do your will, for you are my God. May your good spirit lead me on level ground. Mark Twain said, don't let schooling interfere with your education. (laughs) Good stuff. (laughs) Candace is with us in Dallas. Hey, Candace, welcome to the Ramsey Show. Hi. um, My question is, um, well, the next thing on our to-do list, financial to-do list, is to get term life insurance. Mm -hmm. And part of the pricing for that depends on your weight. Um, But I'm um, two weeks away from having my third baby. (laughs) So I'm curious if I should um, either use my pre-pregnancy weight to fill these um, applications out or the, the tools out, or if I should wait until after our baby is born and, um, and, you know, give it some time to, so that I, I get back down to a more normal weight for myself before I, um, before I go and get a policy. Ethically, either one's okay with me in terms of uh, how much uh, insurance are you applying for? Probably about 1.3 mil. Okay. If they're going to require a medical, they may put you on a scale. Mm-hmm. Okay. And if they're going to do that, then you're going to have to wait till post baby, right? Right. <laughs> and so uh, what I would do, are you working with Xander Insurance? That's where I went. Yeah. Good, good. Call them and ask them okay. what they think you should do on this particular okay. policy with this particular carrier. And they can give you some guidance. If you're going to get put on a scale, you know, because they're coming to check your blood pressure. They're going to do an in-home medical. And on a million-dollar policy, right. they might. Okay? okay. Uh, how old are you? I'm 39. Any other medical? No. Okay. So healthy, mother yeah. of three. 
Okay. Soon to be. Soon to be. Okay. Soon to be three. Yeah. So I, I would talk to them about that. that the, if there is a, an in-house, uh, you know, the number of times I've had a medical exam for life insurance is so many, it's, I can't count them anymore over the years. So, mm-hmm. um, but it's always, you know, they're, they're looking for uh, blood pressure. They're looking at weight and, and uh, uh, BMI, you know, body mass index and so on. And so, uh, you know, if they're okay with you filling it out with your pre-pregnancy weight, that's not really unethical because that is your actual weight. Right. You know, I mean, um, the, what you're going through here is a normal transformational process of having a baby. So that's not not wrong. But now, it, again, if they're going to have if they're going to come three weeks after the baby comes and do a medical, then, you know, you, you probably just need to wait if that's the case, obviously. OK, so yeah. I, I would talk to them, let them talk you through it. Yeah, I would do the same thing. You would think that there would be something that's kind of in place for that sort of situation because like you said having a baby is a natural thing it doesn't mean you're unhealthy or that you're quote overweight yeah well weight gain would be you would need to gain weight exactly that that's the healthy state to to gain weight so i mean third baby sometimes a little more i've I've heard a rumor but i don't know i mean uh, and for some people who will remain nameless second baby (laughs) (laughs) I don't know this person. (laughs) I do not know this person. (laughs) Look, those BMIs that they measure you by. Yeah, that's real. Yes, but. It's completely unfair. It's unfair. Thank you, Dave. It's unfair because muscle weighs more than fat. Okay. Well, I mean, and and (laughs) did you know that old fat weighs even more? (laughs) I'll take your word for it. (laughs) Ancient fat. All right. Jim is in Pittsburgh. Hey, Jim, what's up? Hey, thank you for having me on, and thank you for everything you do. Thank I you. Have a, a quick question. A quick question about baby step six. Mm-hmm. My wife and I are in four, five, and six. Good. And uh, we just moved into the house, and we projected we could probably knock out the mortgage in five to eight years if we live pretty frugally. Two part question, though. What, how intense do you generally recommend for baby step six? Number one, and number two, are we better with that time window of putting the money directly at the mortgage? Or putting it in, let's say, an S and P fund, letting it grow, and then in five or six years taking that and putting it at the uh, principal. Last question first, directly at the mortgage. Mm-hmm. And there's a reason why. And for me, it's you know you'd probably be putting that money in some sort of a brokerage account. And I just don't like the idea, Jim, of having a big pile of money sitting there because I say it all the time. The minute you've got forty thousand, sixty thousand, this guy named Uncle Boo Boo walks in and he's giving you all these great ideas on what you should do with that money instead of doing what you said you were going to do, which is put it towards a mortgage. So there's nothing wrong with just going ahead and chunking that more that money to the mortgage in real time. Um, now back to your first question the baby six thing the intensity you know we say around here that the first few baby steps are about being intense and then the the second few are about intentionality and that's true but i think you know some people maybe baby step two wasn't a huge deal for them and so they're they're ready to put some intensity into something and a lot of times that looks like the mortgage um and if that's the case and you and your wife are like hey we really want to get this thing paid off I really think that's up to you guys. I I personally, you know, me and my husband, we're working to pay off a mortgage. And I I would say we're kind of at that. If if intensity is measured, you know, from one to 100, we're like 50, 60 percent. We're not doing it the way we did baby step two. You know, we're we're being very intentional about putting extra money, making extra payments. But it's not beans and rice, rice and beans. Here's the thing. Um, Extreme frugality is hard to sustain for six or eight years. That too. Emotionally, because you're not participating in ever going out to eat. You're not, you're not ever going on a vacation. You're not, you're driving an old beat up car. You're not buying uh, much clothing at all. Um, and that's an extreme frugality and intention, uh, an intensity that would be gazelle intense in baby steps one, two, three, right? So if, you know, I, I would not recommend extreme in that I wouldn't personally do extreme, but I am very goal oriented. And every time you spend money on something, it means you're not reducing the mortgage and you're going to have it that much longer. So I'm going to, that that's the intentionality piece. I'm going to constantly be making that weighted decision. And some people call that frugal. 
I call it being a grown up. Mm-hmm. Being in, you know. so, in, so maybe instead of a frugal vacation, a modest vacation, something yeah. like that. Yeah, mm-hmm. I mean, uh, you know, like I, I don't want you making three hundred thousand dollars a year and, and you know uh, staying in some ratty hotel. That's just right. silly. I mean, you, you don't do that. Uh, that's not that's not sustainable. And uh, if you want to do that for eighteen months or something, but for six years, that's that's a problem. You know, it's it's very hard to to sustain that relationally. Now, what cause what I'm what I have found in doing what I do is one person might be able to do that, but the other one is not along for a joyride. Mm-hmm. And you start it starts leaving a mark, a scar on your relationships at at some point. The extreme part does. Now, if you're both in and you say, hey, instead of spending this doing this glorious uh, seven day cruise, uh, we're going to do a weekend in a nice Airbnb, yeah. uh, or we're going to you know catch a, a, a deal on a, a, a nice hotel for four days and uh, spend half and put the other half yeah. on there. That that's intentionality. That's, that's not good. intensity, and so that's not extreme frugality. That's just paying attention. Yeah, and we did do all that kind of stuff. That's a good point because I know for Sam and I when I. I remember trying to come in hot with the mortgage stuff and the look on his face was like PTSD. Like we just, we we just just did this. this. Like I just want to enjoy a little bit. And he was right. Yeah. And a little bit is the case. So yeah, yeah, this going hog wild as soon as you get out of debt, is going to get you back into Mm that. So that, that's not what we're talking about. We're going to be intentional. We're going to be doing this with, with purpose. Mm -hmm. But I think you guys, as long as you and your wife are, both at peace, and one of you is not dragging the other one. Yeah, true. Through this, then I think you got a pretty good balance at that point. Mm-hmm. So yeah. some level of frugality. What the culture calls frugality, yes. Right. Because the culture spends like they're in Congress. Well, that's a good point because these definitions are different. Frugality, in my mind, is very different than what some people might say. Yeah, you know, frugality in some people's mind is I don't get everything I want. <laughs> Boo hoo. Bah. Boo-hoo. But that's not what he's talking about, no. and so we need to be careful because I don't want you dumpster diving and uh, ramen noodles and, and you know sewing up your clothes and making four hundred thousand dollars a year and uh, and calling that responsible. Yeah, that's no, that's not terrible. What we're doing. That's not what we're doing. Nope, not during not during four, five, six. Now during one through three, we can do anything you want to. Do. That puts us out of the Ramsey Show in the books. We'll be back with you before you know it. In the meantime, remember, there's ultimately only one way to financial peace, and that's to walk daily with the Prince of Peace, Christ Jesus. Hey, what's up, guys? It's Jade. If you love the show and want a deeper dive on your money journey, we have a weekly newsletter that gives you trending and helpful articles and tips on following the Ramsey way. Just go to RamseySolutions.com today to sign up for our newsletter. Again, that's RamseySolutions.com to sign up for our weekly newsletter.